what's up guys back with another twin motion tutorial i'm going to show you how i accomplished this rendering using twin motion let's get right into the video all right so one of the things i like to do first is give you a tour of the 3d model i created out of revit and i imported it into twin motion using the fbx format so as you can see here we do have quite a few 3d assets on the exterior and i use sketchfab to find this high quality car you can go to sketchfab and you can go to cars and vehicles here and you see a, a nice selection of 3d assets that sketchfab has to offer and if you're not looking to use a high quality car uh, such as this one Twin Motion has a library as well. So you can go to Twin Motion's library, vehicles, and we can go to cars and you have a selection there. So kind of use your preference. Um, some of these 3D models do pack a lot of, uh, pack a lot of memory. So it could uh, bog down your computer. Just kind of use it to your discretion. All right, so I also have stones here or rocks that I've used at a Sketchfab, and I have backyard chairs as well. And we have bird paradise plants, and we also have basket grass, and I use those out of uh, Max Tree and my trees as well. So all this Max Tree and we have growing vines that's on this part of the facade of our residential building and i just use that to kind of create some character all right so guys if you're liking this video don't forget to smash that like button for me hit the notification bell and we're about to get into the path tracer so i just want to kind of show you some of the things that I've done and used to get the results that I get. And if you would like to check out this 3D scene, go to renderreboot.com, check it out, let me know what you think. All right. So let's get right into creating our image. So the first thing you wanna do is create your image here. And we have Path Tracer on, we can turn that off for now. And we have our default settings here and our properties panel all right so right now you're not seeing much of anything so we have our image and the first thing that you may want to think about is you know what type of composition that you want um what type of perspective what what what, what do you want your rendering to speak to anybody else or to your peers or to anyone that you're trying to get people to understand your design. And one of the things that I, I tend to do is I really, I try to get an angle that in my opinion looks really good that captures the true essence of the 3D model and also get a little bit of the landscape here as well. Okay, so I've already got mine set. Okay, so this, this is the view that I've chosen to use. And let's start playing around with some of our settings. Let's just let's go ahead and get right into it. So for this one, I did use the HDRI. And for the HDR environment, I use Sky Dome. You can use backdrop. You can use it um, different, different ways that you see fit. Um, but for this one, this is the direction that I've chosen. All right, so here we have our default HDRI environment, and I'm going to change that. I don't want to use the default one. So here in my user library, you can save your own um, HDRIs as well. And I have a select few that I've used, and I've also used a new one this time. So I used the DaySky HDRI 058A, which I got uh, from ambient CG so we're gonna drag and drop that and as you can see our HDRI is in our scene okay 
so now we want to do now that we have that we want to start changing our settings let's let's click on the path tracer okay so I clicked on the path tracer I just wanted to kind of give an idea of what we're dealing with and what everything looks like so let's click off that let's go to rendering let's go to render path tracer I just want to see what my settings are in a path tracer so right now we have our samples per pixel at 512 which is fine and as you can see we have a decent image um, already but I want to actually change some of our settings to actually uh, hopefully try to increase the realism in our rendering so let's go to environment and we'll leave our path tra tracer on because I want you to uh, hopefully follow along and see some of the the adjustments that I made to my scene all right so we're gonna leave our intensity at one and I want to rotate our HDRI right now is at 90 degrees let's rotate that to 160 so you start to see more shadow you start to see our light still coming in and um, it still looks pretty good we still see our background and um, let's see what else we need to change to enhance our rendering let's go to details okay so i don't see um, anything else i want to make um, any more adjustments to in the environment tab so let's go to camera and so our exposure i do have auto exposure checked and here we can go to still make some uh, additional adjustments so right here we have that exposure at one I want to change that to 1.75 so as you can see that actually brightened up our scene a little bit so that that to me looks pretty good and our white balance is at 6900 I want to change that to 6200 okay and for our tent we're not going to make any adjustments to our tent we'll keep that at zero and for our local exposure, I'm going to enable our local exposure. So now you're like, wow, that that really uh, blown out our image here. Well, that's because we need to make some adjustments to our highlights and our shadows. So I'm going to crank our highlights all the way up to one and our shadows all the way up to one. So our image looks like it's back to normal. OK, so now let's go to lens. In here we have 18 I actually want to be closer up so we're gonna do 20 all right so now we go to details and our vignetting our vignetting is gonna darken our corners and our image and what that does it really just darkens the corners and hones in on our subject which in this case is this area here all right so for our vignetting I want to um, change that to 55% and our sharpness that's way too high let's stick to around 20% okay all right so we also want to check mark parallelism okay and I didn't uh, use any of these uh, other options which you can use if you like you can click on composition and you can click on grid and this way you can kind of um, better figure out how you want your composition to look uh, if you want to use any type of composition techniques and as you can see my uh, computer is saving which is what I wanted to do you definitely want to save continue to save just in case any crashes happen uh, you don't want to start over and believe me I've started over a couple times all right so we're gonna do away with that and so here like I said we're at a kind of a uh, mid kind of quality here so I'm going to increase that to 2048 and I want to change my max bounce to 30 to um, have more light bouncing around in my scene and we're gonna leave emissive materials checked denoiser checked and my fireflies, I would like to um, reduce to five. Okay, so as you can see, our image is looking pretty decent. And um, 
we do have a couple more adjustments that I would like to make. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me and hit the notification bell. And um, also, this 3D scene is on my website at renderreboot.com. Don't forget to check it out for me. And um, let me know what you think. All right, so let's go to FX. And here, we're gonna start playing around with our contrast and our saturation. And we're gonna add a color gradient on this one as well. We may even add a filter. Let's see, let's see what we can do to enhance our rendering. All right, so right now we have our contrast there. Let's make that 38%. And I'm gonna change my saturation to 55%. So here we're gonna go to color gradient. And as you know, Twin Motion has many different options. Um, for some reason, I really like using the color gradient. I think that it brings a lot of character to your renderings. In some cases, you don't have to use it by any means, but I would suggest that you test it out just to kind of see uh, what works for your renderings. So you can definitely um, just test it out just by clicking on different options here. And uh, I think that either way I went, um, I don't think I could have chosen wrong. I mean, some of them, if you were to choose uh, Beauty One for an example, as you can see, it gets really bright. So you'll have to go back and just uh, readjust some of your exposure settings. But here, I believe I use Vice Two. So let's look for vice 2 okay all right so you got vice 2 here all right so as you can see it did kind of tone my image down a little bit um the saturation and um the contrast so it kind of gave it a uh a, a a kind of a color gradient on it which um, made my image look uh, interesting to say the least I actually like how it came out and here we can go to filter and twin motion has different type of filters you can use uh, you can use hatching which is, it kind of gives it a pretty cool look you know I may do something like that uh, in the future and um, you know just it, like I said it just all depends on what you're trying to do but here we're gonna click on line light keep it very simple and we're gonna go to image and here we have a format that is at 2k um, my final image was at 8k I'll just go ahead and put 4k just for the sake of the tutorial and we can go to details and you have tile rendering as an option. Now, if I went up to AK, it would prompt me to, it would prompt me to select, use the tile rendering for high resolution. So anytime you're going up to AK and higher, you want to select tile rendering. So I guess we're gonna do AK anyway. But anyway, so guys, this is how I created this rendering. I hope that this was helpful. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave your questions down below. And uh, don't forget to hit that like button for me and hit the notification bell. And uh, I appreciate you guys and we'll be back with another one.